Early in the life of the church, in the fourth century, a man named Arius begins to teach something which is not quite the truth. You know, Donna likes to talk about people take the Bible and they smudge it. They don't, they don't necessarily deny the whole thing, they just change it a little bit. And that little bit of change is just enough to undermine the most vital and important truth in our lives. And what, that's what Arius was doing. He was challenging the idea that Jesus was, in fact, God. He was challenging the divinity of Christ. He, Arius, was teaching that Jesus was not eternal. He wasn't like God, always existing. No, that Jesus was created. And this is really critical for understanding our salvation because it is the divinity of Christ, his freedom from sin that buys our salvation. Amen. Mm. Yes. And this is what Arius wanted to, uh, 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 this is what Aria, Arian doctrine was undermining. Mm. But God had a champion. So in, we just said together the Nicene Creed. Yes. That was created in the year 325. 325 years after the birth of Christ, the church came together in response to this Arian, um, this Arian heresy, this Arian unbelief, this teaching that Jesus wasn't God. The church came together, the bishops came together, and they declared that in fact that was not the truth, mm -hmm. that Arius was not teaching the truth. They declared that Jesus was eternal. Mm -hmm. They declared that Jesus is God. They declared that he had been since the beginning. They declared just what we read in the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. So, victory, it's all over. The church has stood strong and resisted the Arian teaching. No, mm -hmm. it was far from over. It was far from over. Satan began to use these bishops who had strayed and accepted the Arian gospel, the Arian doctrine. He began to use them and he attacked the church again. But God had a champion. And brothers and sisters, he had an African champion. He had a champion from North Africa, from the city of Alexandria. The bishop of Alexandria was Athanasius. And Athanasius was brilliant. You know, today, there are all these rumors about that people not so smart. I think you may have heard them. You know, we're not as intelligent. We don't do as well in school. We aren't as smart as other people. Athanasius was brilliant. Think about it. Athanasius wrote in the fourth century and almost 2,000 years later, his writing is still being studied. It has stood the test of time, but not just because of his brilliance, but because he stood true to the gospel. Mm -hmm. But Athanasius wrote this book on the incarnation of Christ, some say when he was only 20 years old. Mm -hmm. This incredible defense of the gospel mm -hmm. when he was still such a young man. Athanasius was brilliant. He became the bishop of uh, Alexandria just about the age of 30, one of the youngest bishops of his time. So when you hear that black people aren't smart, just remember Athanasius. And remember that when we make ourselves available to God, he can use all of those skills and talents, all of those gifts for his glory. Amen. Amen. Yes. And remember that as we face the challenges that will come from this tax bill that was passed, as we face the challenges in our lives that come in so many different shapes, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you have a boss at work who is unjust and cruel. Maybe you have a boss at work who just tries to grind you down. Maybe he's disrespectful. But remember that God will champion us as we serve him. Mm -hmm. And we can remember that the God who worked through Athanasius will work in our lives. Amen. That he hasn't forgotten us. Amen. Just as he was there vigilant, watching over the truth, 
and protecting the gospel, not just when Jesus was born, not just protecting him from Herod, not just with him right throughout his life, but even after protecting the church, he continues to protect us today. Amen. So we can rejoice this first Sunday in Advent because he is with us, because he is protecting us, and because he has championed us. God used Athanasius to defend Nicene Christianity, to defend the key teachings of the gospel about Jesus, his son, God himself, eternal and always existent. God used Athanasius to defend this truth. I talked about the fact that Athanasius was brilliant, but you know, it's not just that he was brilliant, he was a man of courage. He was a man dedicated to God. He was a man who withstood opposition and persecution in order to serve God. Once Constantine dies, Athanasius gets to come back. But he's been faithful through that time. So you think, okay, now the victory is won. Athanasius is back in Alexandria, he's back to being bishop. Satan would not give up. The Arians had Athanasius exiled five times. And in the midst of all of that, he's being threatened with death, all in order to get him to buy into a lie, to get him to deny the divinity of Christ. And over the course of 30 years, Athanasius lives in exile for 17 years. And throughout that time, he's staying in touch with his church back in Alexandria, encouraging their faith. He's writing, continuing to defend the gospel. He does not surrender. He does not give up. He is the kind of man we want our young men, our young black men to grow up to be. We want them to grow up to be strong, to be courageous, to stand in the face of opposition, to stand for the gospel, to be true to the gospel. This is what Christ calls us to. I want us to hear a little bit from Athanasius himself. I want us to hear this truth that he defended his whole life. Athanasius tells us that we human beings are under punishment because of our sin. He says there were adulteries and thefts everywhere. The whole earth was full of murders and plundering. There was no concern for law regarding corruption and vice. Every wickedness, individually and jointly, was being carried out by all. The whole world was torn apart by factions and battles. Everyone was competing in lawlessness. He describes, could be describing today. Mm. Think about what is happening to the Rohingya right now. Mm. The fact that Aung San Suu Kyi, who has received a Nobel Prize for, a pe for, a prize for peace, wouldn't stand up against the military in her country to defend helpless people who were being raped, their houses were being burned down, they were being murdered and driven from their land. Doesn't it sound like what he described? Mm. Think about what's happening as people leave his homeland. African migrants journeying north trying to get to Europe, perishing at sea or getting there and being uh, refused entry, or what's happening in Australia, where those, those migrants aren't even permitted into the country. They're sent off to other, uh, other small islands around and basically imprisoned. Isn't it just what Athanasius is describing to us? Think about what's happening right here in this country. Think about young black men killing each other in the streets every day. Isn't it just what he's describing? Think about it in our own lives. When we get sucked into the materialism and we're worried about what we own or what we have or we're concerned about being important. Isn't it just what he's describing? Mm -hmm. Athanasius tells us that because of our sin, the judgment of God is upon us. Paul tells us the same thing in Romans 3, 23 to 26. He says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
and he tells us that the wages of sin is death. By sinning, we had opened ourselves up. That first sin of Adam and Eve had created in us a <coughs> sinful nature. We didn't have the power to repent. We couldn't turn our backs on sin because we now have the sinful nature of Adam and Eve living in us. God needed a more radical solution. And the solution was to send his son. To send that eternal son. Amen. Athanasius says that being the word of the Father and above all, Christ alone consequently, was worthy to suffer on behalf of all and to intercede for all before the Father. He goes on to explain that it was impossible for the Son to die because he's eternal, immortal. He can't die, but then he takes on a human body. And that's what we celebrate on this first Sunday in Advent, mm -hmm. that this eternal God took on a human body. The Son became incarnate, the Word was made flesh, the Son of God became a man. In the words of Athanasius, he prepared for himself in the Virgin the, the body as a temple and made it his own. In the uh, Gospel of Luke, Luke 1 verses 26 to 38, the angel comes to the Virgin Mary and says to her, the Lord is with you. He goes on to say, Mary, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary's astonished. She's like, how can this possibly happen? First of all, I'm a virgin. How can I get pregnant? And the angel answers, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Right there. There is the Word of God taking on a body as a temple in the womb of the virgin. And having been born of this virgin, having been made a man, he dies on the cross for our sins. In the words of Athanasius, he offered his body to the Father, doing this in his love for human beings. And in so doing, he pays the price of our sins. Because we see in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18, it says, 18 and following, it says, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. So this body allows him to die in our stead, to pay the price that we couldn't pay ourselves. He takes on the body. That's why the incarnation is so important. He takes on the body of a man so that he can die in our place. So the incarnation is the key. This coming to earth of Jesus that we celebrate this first Sunday in Advent is the key to our salvation. And that is what Athanasius stood firm for. That is why we rejoice, because we know the truth. And we know the truth because of this man from Africa.